So this video is looking at rolling resistance and how we include that in a free body diagram. So on the screen I have a roller sitting on a horizontal flat surface. Um, obviously if we start putting forces on it we will have gravity acting down, we will have a normal force acting up to resist that. Given that we are looking at a case of rolling resistance, what we know in that case is that I will need a force acting on my roller in order to make this thing roll against the rolling resistance. If we have a force acting to the right, um, then I must have a force acting to the left in order to counteract that, in order that my sum of force is equal to zero. So there will be a friction force under here. Now this is not a sliding friction force, this is just a reaction force, a static friction pushing up against that. Um, if we look at our sum of forces, sum of forces left and right must equal zero, um, therefore we know that F must equal the value of the friction force which is being applied. Logically if F is greater than the friction force, then we know that my roller would skid along the surface um, rather than roll along that surface. Um, sum of forces up and down equals zero. Yep, we know that mg will equal fn and everything is good. If we now look at sum of torques equals zero, what we'll find in this case is that we have a problem with that. So if I do torques about the center point, what we will find is that we'll have our friction force acting at the radius of the wheel producing a torque around clockwise. If I have an out of balance torque then that is going to result in a acceleration of my object and in this case what we've said is we don't have acceleration, my roller is rolling at a constant velocity along the surface. So something is fundamentally wrong with the way that I'm drawing that diagram. Um, if we have a look at the components that we have, if I take these two reaction forces that we have, so we have an Fn acting up and we have a friction component acting this way. I can replace that with equivalent single force acting at this angle. So if I now redraw my free body diagram. My roller, my surface, gravity is acting at the center, applied force to make this thing slide. If I now draw my single reaction force through this way, so it's slightly exaggerated but we put it into here. This we said is made up out of my two parts. It's made up out of my mg component and my friction force component. These forces must act through the same point. So my gravity, my friction force and my reaction force all must pass through the same point because we know that three forces acting on a system have to be either concurrent or parallel. If we have a look at these components now, so we put them back in, this is my point of application of my reaction. So my um, Fn force will actually act here and my friction force will act at this point. Um, if we look at my normal force part of this, my normal force will actually be acting here at an eccentricity from the center. So when we do our sum of moments, my reaction force is now providing an anti-clockwise torque about the center of the roller. The, the easiest way to actually do this is I'm going to take my normal force and replace it with an equivalent force in moment. So if I put this in green, what we're going to do is replace it with an equivalent f single force acting up and an equivalent torque due to my rolling resistance. 
obviously from my diagram, my TR will equal Fn times the eccentricity value. So this is a far easier way to represent the rolling resistance in terms of a free body diagram. So what we have now is my Mg acting down. We put our Fn acting up exactly underneath that. We have an applied force to make it move. We will have a static friction force under here, which we know will equal F. And we will have an equivalent torque from my rolling resistance acting against the direction of rotation. So my velocity is this way and my omega is this way. And the main part in here is that my TR is equal to the Fn times the eccentricity value. Um, it's normally very difficult to try and work out what those eccentricity values are. Um, it's far easier to talk about a rolling resistance as a torque um, acting about the center of the roller itself. Um, that makes our free body diagram here correct.